All right, everybody, so we're at the last stage of our How to Shoot a Wedding video series. And in this vlog, we're gonna be focusing on what to do after you've shot the wedding. So the stressful part is over, the hardest and most labor intensive part is over. And now, what do you do afterward? We're gonna be diving into this process. It's often the lengthiest part of the entire process. I'm not gonna be focusing too heavily on the technicalities of editing, but rather I'm gonna be focusing on logistics, you know, communicating with your couple, things like that. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Tip number one is get some rest. When you finish your day of shooting at a wedding, you are going to be tired. I don't care how good a shape you're in, you're going to be pretty exhausted. So what I would suggest is taking the next day and doing absolutely nothing. And by that, I mean sitting around and watching movies, just resting in general. If you wanna go for a hike and get outside, read a book, do anything except worry about the video and just set aside a good day or two to just chill out and decompress your mind and body from everything that had gone on the day before. Don't review the footage, don't look at it, just kind of step away from it for a second. And then what we'll do is after you've rested, that's when we're gonna go into actually getting into what you need to do next. Tip number two is recheck your equipment. This is after you've rested for a couple of days, you've been away from everything for a minute, come back, go through your equipment, and go through it and make sure everything is in good working condition, make sure you've got everything and check it off on a list. This is a good practice in general. I remember in film school, I had three checklists for equipment before, during, and after the shoot. So I try to pretend that I'm renting the equipment from someone else as if it wasn't my own. Because if you were taking your equipment back into a rental house and checking it back in, you would want to make sure that every single piece of equipment is accounted for and that it's working properly. So you kind of want to use that practice in general for any shoot. Tip number three is follow up with the couple. Send them a text and say, thank you so much for letting me shoot your wedding. I'm so glad I was a part of your special day. I can't wait for you to see the footage. I've already taken a look at it and it looks awesome. I can't wait for you to see it. And just that quick primer uh, for the editing process that you'll be communicating with them throughout. And that's a good primer for the weeks ahead. And then we're gonna head into lightly a little bit of the editing process and I'll get into that in the next tip. Tip number four is go ahead and begin the process of post-production. I won't get really far into the minutia of exactly every single step that I take in the editing process. There's so much involved in editing, I could probably make an entire vlog on how to transcode and ingest your footage right by itself. So I won't elaborate that completely uh, in this vlog, but I'll just go over the basics. And a couple of tips to remember before you start editing, and this is very important to remember that this process of editing is going to take a minute. It's gonna take a while. And by that, I mean a full solid, probably about at least a month. And just take your time. Don't get intimidated by the sheer amount of footage and just kind of take your time to familiarize yourself with everything that you shot. Go through all the footage and review it. Get everything set up nice and neat so that whenever you're actually editing, you can focus on the creative side of things and you can focus on your cuts. So that being said, I put a, a quick generalized timeline of how I do things uh, in the blog. You're feel free to check that out. But uh, for the most part, I typically tell couples that it's gonna be about a month at least before they start to see a somewhat finished product. So just kind of clarify that with them. There are some videographers that take 
entire months uh, to do nothing but edit. And that's perfectly fine. I try to do something faster in the course of, I'd say a month, maybe two at the longest, but I try to my best to deliver the video in a timely manner. Tip number five is provide a social media teaser to the couple. I typically try to do that within about, I'd say a week after you've shot with them. You can take longer if you feel like you need to perfect it more, but I typically try to get them a social media teaser as quickly as possible. And this accomplishes several things. A, it's going to give them an idea of what to expect the final video to look like. B, it's going to build some anticipation and excitement on social media for the actual video whenever it gets released. And third, it's actually going to reassure them that you're actively working hard to get their video finished and you're not just gonna leave them hanging throughout this process. You're gonna be working with them every step of the way and that's very reassuring to them. Tip number seven, and this is gonna be a real shocker since you've heard me say this about a million times by this point, is communicate with the couple throughout the editing process. I would say that a good average for keeping them updated all along, I'd say a good average is probably once a week. Just give them an update on what's going on, how the editing is looking, how their footage is looking. Just keep them encouraged that you are actively working to make sure that you get them a quality edit. Tip number seven is provide a rough cut to the couple whenever you feel that it's in a good place to show them. So whenever they see the rough cut, uh, allow them to give you any revisions that they might want. In my experience, the revisions that are wanted are typically pretty minor. And just go ahead and rinse and repeat that process of, you know, you give them a rough cut, you revise it, you send the rough cut back to them and you keep on going back and forth in that process until the couple is happy. Tip number eight is schedule a release date for the actual video. So I'm gonna assume a couple of things. The couple has signed off on your edit. It is a final polished edit that you feel is ready to be shown to anyone anywhere on the internet. Okay, so what you wanna do is you wanna schedule a release date on social media and that will build up excitement. And then from there, once you get it uploaded, you've got it scheduled, you just kind of sit back. Tip number nine, and this focuses on the actual release time of your video, is sit back and relax. You've worked really hard to get to this point. Just sit back, let those awesome view counts and shares roll in and just kind of let it go out into the internet. You don't really have to do a whole lot from this point. You just kind of sit back and relax. And then next we're gonna talk about follow up after release. Tip number 10 is follow up after release. So after the release date has been passed, it's gone out onto the internet and everybody's watched it, and you've got a million view counts, hopefully, then follow up with your couple and thank them again for working with them and being so awesome to work with. Get their files, their delivery files, onto a, uh, a USB drive. Go ahead and send it their way. And another pro tip that I've seen a lot of other videographers do is you can kind of keep their anniversary date in mind for the future. So if it's been a year since they got married, what you can do on your social media pages is post their video again. And you can say, hey, congratulations on your one year anniversary. You know, we hope the newlywed uh, life is treating you well. Um, and we hope you're having a happy life. And, and you know, I think the couple will really appreciate that, that you, that you thought of them, that you remembered their date, 
and that sticks out in their mind. And that means that if you're thinking of them and you treat them well, then you're probably going to get more recommendations. Okay guys, so that concludes our How to Shoot a Wedding Video series. I hope that all this has been useful. I know it's been a lot of information, but good luck in shooting your wedding videos, and we'll see you on the next vlog.